Hello comic book guys and gals and welcome to Comic Mag Musings. I am your handsome yet humble host, Bill Miller. All right, today I'm going to be showing you how I package up a graded comic book for shipping. Now there are a lot of different ways to package comic books. I'm not saying this is necessarily the best way. It's certainly not the only way, but I've over the years sent off hundreds and I've only once gotten back a claim that one was damaged and it was suspiciously claimed to have been damaged from after ha my having sent it to the consignment place and then them sending it over to the customer. Never got pictures or anything like that. But at any rate, I've had one claim of damage in a couple hundred books that have been shipped out. So I think I do a pretty good job and I will show you how I go about packaging up a graded book. All right, so if you use eBay, um, I usually will just print out the label, the shipping label from eBay. Um, there's a discount versus what you would pay on USPS. If you don't use eBay, I would suggest PirateShip.com. I have an account with them as well, and they have the same type of discount that eBay has, but for non-eBay sales, you can still get that discount through them. Um, eBay and Pirate Ship. Pirate Ship used to be $150 insurance. Now they're $100 insurance um, that for uh, priority mail, the same as eBay. And so if you make a sale that, is, that exceeds that $100 amount, you're allowed to pay for the additional insurance to make sure you insure the item for the full sale value. I usually do that as much as it pains me because the whole concept is like paying protection money to the mafia, right? I'm paying you to protect me from you. That's the same thing you're doing with the post office. You're saying, I'm going to pay money for insurance because you may lose or damage the item I'm sending. It seems like a scam, but it's the world we live in. And so that's what I do. All right. So. We have the comic book. So I sold this comic book. If you don't have a bag for it, you should probably get a bag. Um, I usually don't include cardboard. I usually do not do that, but I came across some recently, so I will. It'll add a little bit of rigidity, a little bit of structure to the slab. It'll help it from any type of side impacts. So I will put those on. Now the best thing is to protect the edges. That is where you're going to see the majority of your damage. It's not going to be a crack in the slab itself. It'll be the impact points, the hard beveled edge on the top or on the bottom. Um, those are what's going to sustain damage most often. So I will put these here. Now I include, whether I have cardboard or not, as I said, usually I don't, I include some free comics with the purchase. So in this particular case, um, I will put some in front and I will put some in back. And there are two reasons I do that. First of all, I think it's it's fun for someone to receive free comics. I think it's a nice thing to do. But secondarily, it does provide a bit of extra cushion to help protect against any type of side impact to the front or the back of the slab. Um, here's some other items we have. We have bubble wrap. You can use the big bubble wrap. I don't use it. I think it's more economical to use the smaller bubble wrap, and that's what I use. I will be using this Priority Mail medium flat rate box. These are free from the post office. If you can't pick any up, you can go to usps.com and you can order a collection of 10, 25, however many you need. They'll be delivered to you free of charge. So these are free. You can order them online at the post office and they will be delivered to you. So I use these 
I use packaging tape. I believe the kids call these skizzers. A black Sharpie and some newspaper. So those are the items that I have. I've already printed out my label and that will go on last. So, first thing we do is we get the box. I'm gonna put the label there. That's where I want the bottom. So, and in the side flaps. Peel off the plastic so you have some glue already underneath that plastic. Put that down and carefully and push in so you get a nice tight seal on top. All right, push that down. And now we're gonna do our first tape. So, we'll usually do it in sections. I'll cut one and I'll make sure that I seal the edges. Start here. It's on the top. Bend the tape down. Are you kids excited? Are you sensing the excitement in this? The other one. Alright, so now it's sealed hit this side. Now we want to do the sides as well. One, put it on the top, bend it down. So a couple things. The most important thing is we want the box <laughs> to stay together. And we want to make sure that the box doesn't get compromised, thereby damaging the contents inside. But also, this does provide some level of wetness protection in case it's raining, in case it's snowing and the box is left there. This provides a level of protection against that. All right, so that's what we've got now. We'll set the box aside and we want to put plastic wrap around our pockets. So I will take my plastic wrap and I'll cut a generous portion. And usually I like to, the flat side to be against the item, whatever it is, whether it's comics or action figures or what have you. Um, and the bubble side out. So we're gonna do this from the side. Wrap, wrap it around. Now I usually pick up plastic wrap at hardware store, like Lowe's or Home Depot, but you can get in literally anywhere. You know, Target, Walmart, um, Amazon. There's two pieces of tape. All right, now we got that. It feels pretty good, but we're gonna have to wrap it lengthwise. So that's done widthwise, but we need some more to do lengthwise. Again, flat side toward the item. About in the center of it. And then we need to a couple more pieces of tape just to secure the plastic. could tuck these sides in, but I don't do that. No need to, I don't. All right, so now we're ready for the box. All right, I generally want the top up, and I will slide it into the box. And there'll be about a half an inch to an inch difference between the box and the the top of the box and the top of the slab. All right, now here is where we use newspaper. So 
if you buy the newspaper, which I don't know too many people do that as much nowadays, but if you get lots of free paper, like we do, we get different neighborhood papers delivered to us. I, do, I keep those because that's free packaging material. So I will bunch them up slightly and I will put them on either side of the slab inside. The, the key is to keep the slab away from the sides of the box, almost like it's suspended in the middle of the box. That is how you're going to best protect it during shipment because the box are what's going to sustain damage when it's thrown, kicked, punched, whatever. And another key is I only ship um, priority mail for slaps. It's kind of like when you're crossing a busy street. If you take your time and you're really, really slow, you increase your risk of being struck by a car. So your risk increases the longer you take. The same thing for mailing comics. The longer they're in the system, the USPS system, the longer or the more opportunity there is for that comic book to be damaged somehow. Sitting around in a room, thrown here, then moved and thrown over here, then moved over here. Priority mail, it's not only is it gonna to get to the the buyer quicker, which they'll appreciate, but it's in the system for a smaller amount of time and thereby it doesn't expose itself to potential damage as much. So that's the idea. That damage that you're paying insurance to make sure that the post office reimburses you for when it happens. So that's what's good about newspaper. It will keep it, and if it's a little bit big, puffy, that's okay, it doesn't matter. I will usually put it all the way up so that the slab from the bottom to the top is away from the sides of the box. And then I will cap it off by putting some on top of the box as well. Or on top of the slab, I should say. That way there's a little bit of cushion on the end and pack it too. And I'll usually put something like this. I'll usually put that at the bottom. So, here's what it looks like. And now we're ready to close it up. So we do the same thing that we did before. But now we gotta make sure. There we go. All right. Going to tape the edges on this as well. And a lot of this might be overkill. And I imagine if this were a true business for me, I'd probably have to do like some materials analysis and some time and motion studies to make sure that I was creating as efficient a packing process as possible. Um, but as of now, it isn't a business for me. And I've had pretty good success over many years doing it this way. All right, so now we have it taped up, feels good can't hear it move. That's, that's key. You don't want it moving around in there either, right? That means that you don't, you don't have something in place very well. Um, here's where this comes in place, the marker. So I will write 
the Italian for Jilly on the package. I'll write it where I'm going to put the label and then I'll put it on sides. Now I don't know that this helps. It may piss them off and they may actually toss it and throw it around more than they would have. But like I said, I've always done it and I've had good uh, luck thus far. So I'll keep doing it. I'll write it on the bottom and I'll write it on this side as well. I don't write it on the ends. All right, so the next step is we make sure that we have our label. In this case, I printed it out with an, a receipt. So I have my receipt of who it was sent to, how much was paid, blah, blah, blah. Um, I will trim it so that it's nice. And I will tape it four pieces there, 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 and it's good to go. That's packed up. And then I will drop it off at the post office and I will make sure I get a receipt from the postal worker after I drop it off. And that will do it for the quick hit explanation of how to package up a CGC, CBS, CBCS, or PGX slab for shipping. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I would encourage you to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you're alerted as soon as I release new red hot content. Thumbs up and comments are always appreciated. And remember, we're taking over the world one comic book at a time.